this, this isn't working. Can we just take it seriously, please? Yeah? Cool. All right, as you've heard, this is the Aston Martin DBS, the flagship machine in the range. It's designed to sit somewhere between the DB9 road car and the DB9R race car, bridging the gap between Knightsbridge and the Nürburgring. Now, we already know it's the stuff of movie legend, but at £160,000, is it really worth it? It may resemble an Aston Martin DB9, but that's where the similarities end. The DB9 is made from heavy materials like metal and old boots, but this DBS is carefully crafted from carbon fibre and aluminium, two of the most lightweight compounds available. The best way I can show this off is by showing you the bonnet. I can literally lift it with one finger. It weighs absolutely nothing. The interior is spectacular. I've got to admit, just sitting in this car gives me butterflies. And a lot of that is down to the fact it's finished in a suede-like material called Alcantara. And leather, lots and lots of leather. Even the instruction manual is finished in what used to be a cow. I've got to tell you, my favorite thing about it is the smell. It smells like babies, little cow babies. The key is made from crystal and it does slot into the dashboard. You simply insert it, wait for the system to boot up, and then, Hit the clutch, push the power button, bang. The entertainment system is also pretty special. The standard DBS ships with a 700 watt Dolby ProLogic 2 audio setup. But if you really want the best of the best, then I suggest you buy the 1000 watt Bang & Olufsen Bio Sound DBS package. This audio system has been developed specifically for Aston Martin, so it's acoustically and physically matched to this car. Bang & Olufsen has definitely got the physical part just right. Up on the dashboard where your car might have tweeters, the DBS has acoustic lenses, and not just any old acoustic lenses, these are motorized. When I press the button on the center console, they rise slowly and seductively from the dashboard. Obviously, they're a bit of a gimmick, but they do help ensure 180 degree horizontal dispersion of high frequencies. This gives the user an improved sense of staging, separation, and enhanced realism of sound. Acoustically, when mated to the 11 other speakers in this car, most notably an 8-inch subwoofer underneath the rear passenger shelf, BL Sound DBS delivers amongst the best sound I've heard in anything on four wheels. Like most modern cars, the DBS has connectivity for your iPod, USB MP3 player or memory key. But again, controlling them is a painful process requiring a level of mental dexterity usually reserved for members of Mensa. And thanks to a tiny music information display, a level of visual acuity usually reserved for Hawks. It's as if Aston Martin hasn't bothered or doesn't care about usability. Take the Satnav for example. This rises and falls seductively, a bit like the audio system, but there's no touchscreen interface. Everything is controlled via this weird four-way joystick. Entering something as simple as a postcode is a bit like hacking into NASA. Then, once you get there, you can't actually enter a six-digit postcode. Four is your maximum, which means entering a street name is a necessity rather than an option. And actually, my street isn't even on this list. How am I going to get home? If this was any other car, I would have walked out by now. The tech has got to be right. Luckily, it's an Aston Martin DBS, so I'm going to give you the chance to redeem yourself. I'm going to hand it over to our lame racing driver. Now I'm out on the track. First impressions are that this car is absolutely brutal. Reach my braking point hard on the carbon ceramic brakes. These things go from 60 miles an hour to north in about 60 meters. Superb! These tires, built specifically by Pirelli for the DBS, just grip so hard. 60 miles an hour happens in 4.3 seconds, up to fourth gear, shifting up. Oh, back down again. <laughs> As we approach this quick S bend, right a little left, and then there she goes. Oh, a little bit too leery there. Traction control is switched off, of course, making things that much more fun. Now, a long right hand bend as we approach another straight towards the chicane, fourth gear. Reach my braking point hard on the carbon ceramic brakes. All coming in hot and then back on the power again. Whew. Utterly, utterly superb. Some might say the Aston Martin DBS is a bit of a show pony. 
Some might say that as a supercar, its number might be up. But as you'll learn, there are some numbers that remind you just how special this car really is. Its 5.9 litre V12 engine puts out 510 brake horsepower and 5,750 foot-pounds of torque, helping the car reach 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds and onto a top speed of 191 miles per hour. On ordinary roads, the adaptive suspension provides a soft, smooth ride. A computer monitors readings from the car's throttle, brakes, steering position and speed to modify firmness on the fly. In track mode, everything is set to the firmest position, meaning this car stays perfectly flat through corners with only a hint of understeer when pushed hard. Driven sensibly, the DBS will return 11.6 urban miles per gallon. You might also be alarmed to find the car spits out 388 grams per kilometer of CO2, nearly four times as much carbon dioxide as a Toyota Prius. If you give a damn about mother nature, then a DBS probably isn't the car for you. So the big question, should you buy one? Well, if you're a TV star, a lottery winner, or a rapper, then yes. And even if you're not, you really should think about robbing, stealing from, or maiming anyone that gets in your way of owning one. I guarantee you, sell your granny if you have to. This car will outrun, outgun, and outfun anything else on four wheels.